Hi everyone, thanks a lot for watching this short video on how to integrate CyberArk Workforce Identity with Google Workspace. Again, some, uh, again, like some of my previous video where I talked about how to integrate CyberArk Identity with the AWS Identity Center. So we will be keeping the presentation very short and we will be spending majority of the times in looking at the entire setup. In terms of the agenda, so this is the brief agenda we are going to focus upon. The first thing is we are going to talk about the prerequisite. Then we are going to talk about uh, how does this end-to-end -end integration diagram going to look like. And then we will be looking at it, hey, what are the different steps we have to perform as part of this entire integration. At last, we will do the setup together. In terms of the of a prerequisite, the first thing is in the Google Workspace or the Google Cloud Identity, you should be you should be setting it up. For setting it up again, you really need to have a domain name. And uh, I I like the video of this guy named Goldie Aroda. Again, once you scan this QR code, it will take you to the YouTube link of Goldie Aroda, where he shows shows like how to set up. Google uh, Cloud Identity step by step. As a next step, you have to have a CyberArk Identity tenant. Again, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial if you have a permanent setup. So that's perfectly fine. The last but not the least is, so AD integration, for the AD integration, you have to deploy a small connector, identity connector using this integration. So any of your AD users, they will be authenticate to the CyberArk identity. Again, setting it up takes like less than five minutes. So it's a very basic thing. So that's the reason I'm not going to cover it in this uh, video. In terms of the integration diagram, so this is how this entire integration diagram is gonna look like. So our identity source is going to be Active Directory. That's where my users and groups are gonna be. Then, uh, then we have a CyberArk identity. In the CyberArk identity, I have like a couple of apps. Uh, for the current demonstration, we will be focusing upon a Google Cloud Platform application. And then I set up a Google Workspace. Then I have like a couple of GCP projects and so on. In terms of the integration, we will be leveraging upon a SAML-based authentication. In terms of the provisioning, we will be provisioning the user, AD users and the group from AD all the way to your Google Workspace. So that's how this entire integration is going to look like. In terms of the four different steps, so these are the few four different steps we will be performing. The first step is we will be looking at how to set up CyberArk Workforce Identity, which is your IDP. Then as a second step, we will be looking at, so what are the different configurations you have to do on the Google Workspace side? As a third step, what we will be doing, we will be provisioning or doing some configuration on the CyberArk identity side so that your appropriate users and the groups can be provisioned all the way from AD to your Google workspace. The last but not the least is we will be doing a single sign-on access. And then to, to, to learn all these things, again, you can go to the CyberArk documentation uh, it provides a detailed step-by-step -step, uh, information. So now the time comes and let's try to set it up step-by-step uh, -step here. So here, so this is the video I was referencing. So the guide name is like Goldie Aroda. So if you wanna learn how to set up an entire uh, Google Cloud identity, so you will be able to do that. All you need, you need to have a uh, domain name then only you will be able to set it up. In terms of the CyberArk documentation, again, we will be looking into the CyberArk documentation. So here is the entire page. So once you scroll down, you will be able to see all these configurations step by step. We will be looking into some of these steps as well as we go through this entire setup. So, uh, and so what I did, so here, if I log in into one of my uh, Windows Server. So I have set up Active Directory. So here, 
if I go to the Active Directory users and computers, so you will be able to see my domain name is scsolutionsdemo.com. I have a couple of users like AWS, AWS2 for my AWS demo. And then for uh, GCP video, we will be leveraging up on GCP, GCP2, and then I have a group, GCP Cloud. There I got like two different members, GCP and GCP2. And uh, within this AD, so what I did, I set up my identity connector as well. Ideally, you shouldn't be installing anything on your Active Directory. You should be installing it on a different machine. But for sake of convenience, I set up this uh, my Cybrac identity connector as well. So if I go to my identity administration tab, if I go to the network on the Cybrac identity connector, you are able to see my connector is up and running. So and so that's pretty much. So what we will do as a first step, we'll go to the web app and uh, we will try to add a Google Cloud as one of the application. So here, so let me search with the Google Cloud. So here, so I'm leveraging upon this Google Cloud platform, SAML Plus provisioning as an application. Once I add this application, so then we will try to set it up. So here, our domain name is scsolutionsdemo.com. If I go to my admin console, you are able to see my domain as well, scsolutionsdemo.com. So I'll be I'll be using uh, the, this domain as a first step, and uh, let's customize. Uh, I mean, we can customize it if required. I'm leaving as it is. So then we can save it. So then as the next step, I'll go to the trust. In the trust, you are able to see all these, all these different IDP settings and so on. So what we will do on the Google side, so we will go to the security and we will go to the single sign-on with third party IDP. So once we do that, so the first step is we have to enable the single sign-on and then so we have to provide all the settings sign-in uh, page url for the sign-in page url so what we can do we can follow this cyberox documentation so we have done this step first as a Second step, I mean, we can download the certificate. Uh, so here in the sign-in page URL, so here, if we wanna have a SP initiated single sign-on, copy the URL from the admin trust page. And then, uh, so that's how you're gonna configure it. So give me a second, let me, let me try to configure the sign-in URL. So here, uh, sign in page URL. So this is the URL, what it is referring to. So I'll copy and I'll paste it here. In terms of the sign out URL, again, it is asking for a uh, sign out URL. Again, you can keep it as, as same configuration or you can click on a manual setting and that's here you can get your sign out page URL as well. So here uh, we are going to get the certificate uh, from Cybra. So I download my certificate and then what, what I do, I replace my certificate. So now the certificate has been uh, uploaded. So as a last step, what I'll do, so I simply provide this URL so that whenever user wanna change the password, they will be redirected to the CyberArk URL. So these are the few settings what we have to do. So that's pretty much on the Google side. What we will do, we will uh, click on save button. And that's all the configuration what we have to do on the Google side. So now we will come back on the CyberArk side. We don't have to provide all this information. 
on the cyberox side. So I'll, I'll click on save for now. So what we will do, we will click on the provisioning part. So let's do the provisioning for this one. So first step is we will authorize. So I will log in as my administrator user. So then it's gonna show you what all things uh, by uh, this uh, cyber identity will have an access to. So once you allow, then only the authorization is gonna go through. So it takes a couple of seconds. So now we see uh, we have successfully auth authorized. And so here, uh, there are a couple of different settings what we will be doing. Again, we will keeping it simple. So we will simply override the users if there is any. So we can synchronize the AD groups. Uh, and then, so as of now, we are going to disable the user if the user gets disabled. Or uh, in the in the cyber app side, uh, in the identities in the in the Active Directory, so you, we are providing you two different options: either you want to disable or delete delete the user. So depending upon your choice, you can pick and choose. And then on the role mapping, we will be choosing some of the roles later on. So first, I'm going to click on a save. So once we click on a save and then I'll click on a role. So we will create a new role called, uh, for example, uh, Google Access or Google, Google, Google Access. So here I'm going to save it in. Uh, okay, I have two different groups, never mind. So let me use one of these. Let me remove all these things and then we'll configure and we will focus upon one role only. Let me delete the other Google Access here. So once I click on the Google Access, so here comes a member. So here, so whatever my AD group was, uh, Google, So this was my AD group. So GCP cloud at the rate of sesolutionsdemo.com. So what we want, we want these two users as part of this AD group. These users should get provision on, on the Google workspace. So I will click on add and then we will click on sync. So once we do that, Let's go to the web app again, go to the Google Cloud Platform. In the Google Cloud Platform, we go to the provisioning. In the provisioning, so we are going to choose this Google Access as a group. So here we are, here you can select your OU. So the reason why you wanna map your appropriate role to the OU because on, in the, on the Google Workspace side, Depending upon the OU, you can you can uh, assign the appropriate licenses. So that's why you want to do that. So uh, for this particular demonstration, so we are simply going to choose a uh, slash, and so we are going to let it. So let's take an example. Okay, Just giving an error. So let me check my. Let me check the details, what I did. Okay. So here on the destination side, let me try configuring it again. So we are going to choose Google Access and the destination group we are going to choose as, as it is. And we are not going to choose any kind of a domain and group. So, so currently this is how you're gonna keep that check. So you can save it. And once we save it, then we have to assign the permission to appropriate users here. So I'm going to assign the permissions to my AD group, uh, which is GCP cloud at the rate of sesolutionsdemo.com. So I'm gonna allow them to view. 
and then I'm gonna click on save. So now you see my application has been deployed. So what I'll do, because some provisioning takes like five to 10 minutes, I think. So for this demonstration, we'll go and try to provision, uh, provision uh, we will try to do the provision, provisioning manually. So I think let me pause this video. It will take like five to 10 minutes here for Google app to appear for the outcome. So it takes around like, it took around like one minute for Google Cloud Platform to appear. So what you can do, you can refresh your browser as well. So I'm selecting Google Cloud Platform. You can do a sync. And for the first time, uh, we, you can do the bypass as well if required. Yeah. So once you do that, you can look at the synchronization report in the job history as well. It will provide you all the information. But in in uh, current context, what I'll do, I'll go to my Google Cloud. So here we will try to see whether the user has been synchronized from uh, AD to here. So here you see two different users, GCP at the rate of demo.com and GCP2. In terms of the groups also, so we should expect like AWS Cloud, GCP Cloud, and the Salesforce. These are the three different groups present in my AD. If I go to my AD, so you will be able to see all these different groups. Again, in the provisioning script, you can do some sort of a filtering as well if it is required here. So here you see like AWS Cloud, ECP Cloud, and Salesforce. These are the three different AD groups what I created. So in terms of the entire setup, the provisioning has been done successfully. Everything looks okay. So we are going to log in as one of the user called GCP2. Uh, and then from there, we will try to access uh, the Google Workspace application. So here, let me log in. So once I'm able to log in, so here you see Google uh, Cloud Platform as one of the app. So once you double click, so, so from there, I think you have to accept it. And then from there, you will be able to get into the Google Cloud. And then you have to acknowledge the terms of service for the first time. And then, so in a way, your authentication goes through and depending upon, uh, depending upon what are the different roles has been provided, has been given to this particular user, uh, so, so that's how user will be able to go and uh, do the appropriate task on the Google Cloud platform. So, so uh, thanks a lot, everyone, uh, for watching this short video on how to do the integration, uh, uh, how to do the Google Google Workspace integration with Cyber Academy. Thanks a lot. Bye.